Hello. My new daughter-in-law. <laughs> I, I, I can see you. by the last name. <laughs> right. <laughs> Not everyone Hi, knows. Hi. 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 Hi, guys. Hi. Welcome. Richard's Welcome. trying to join on the other. Here's Richard. Richard. Hi. Welcome. Yeah. Thank you. That's my baby. <laughs> <laughs> He's trying to log in on his computer. Oh, but you can't see people Maybe. in our little group there. He's trying to log in. That's okay. He didn't want to. And I'm going to mute everyone so we can uh, tune okay. into the sanctuary. Shabbat shalom, Thank everyone. You. Thank, you. Thank you. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. <laughs> Wash everything away. 
Cantor, who who wrote that beautiful nigun? Well, I call it Ethan's nigun. I know. I know, sweetie. Okay, I, I, I very affectionately Ethan put Ethan's so nigun bad. here on it. Ethan, where did you fit this? Ethan found this nigun for us. He will be he he will be our master of melodies. He has many more to come. Um, but where where did you find this particular one? Uh, it's old. I, well, most of what we do here is old. old yeah, we go, we we do old really well here. <laughs> the Cane Street with a K. I know Cane Street. Beautiful. So from now on, it'll be Ethan's Cane Street Nigun. Okay. <laughs> Today, March 25th, 1911, was one of the most devastating moments in the labor movement and in, or really concentrated the labor movement, because this was the Triangle Shirtwaist Factory fire. The, tri the Triangle Shirtwaist Fac Company, Jewish owned and at this time, had about 500 workers creating blouses in the factory when a fire broke out. The fire only lasted about 40 minutes, but 146 souls passed away that day. Most of them recent immigrants who were Jewish or Italian. When we fast forward about five years after that, that we see a moment for the first time in 1916 that was similar to this week. This week as we saw Judge Katanji Brown Jackson face some, some intense and sometimes racially loaded questions, we look back to 1916, the very first time that a Supreme Court justice nominee was really hounded for the very first time. All the nominees up to then were just kind of voted an up and down vote pretty quickly. But four months of vicious public debate happened over attorney Louis Brandeis to be judge. It was the first Jew who was nominated to be on the Supreme Court. And everything changed in that moment. And it was vicious and like this week, sometimes racially and religiously loaded. We bring history in because we are a people of history. Every time we get to Passover, we recall that we were slaves in Egypt. Every Friday night, we recall that God took six days of creation on the seventh, God rested, and so we rest as well. We are always in this spiral, looking back, but experiencing what it was in that moment, what it was like to be slaves, what it was like to rest for that very first Shabbat. To help us bring in Shabbat on this particular week, I get to invite up Jackie Gilson. Jackie is such an active part of our Sholem justice community. She leads our Feed the Hungry movement, where we, with a number of other synagogues, feed and send about 200 meals every week to a church on the west side. And Jackie, thank you so much for helping us do that great work. Page 120. Baruch Ata 
Adonai, Eloheinu melech ha'olam, asher kishanu b'mitzvotav, v'tzinanu lehad ligner, lehad ligner, shel shabbat. Amen. And for our Kiddush sanctifying this holy day, I get to invite up Rabbi Rena Singer to lead us on page 123 as we rise in body or in spirit. <laughs> Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Borei Peri HaGafen Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam Asher Kitshanu B'mitzvotav Leratzavanu Veshabat Kodcho Veahava Uvratzon Hinchilanu Zikaron Lemaase Bereishit Ki hu yom techila le mikra e kodesh zecher le siyat mitzrayim ki vanu vahata veotanu ki dashta ohamim veshabat kodshcha veahava uvratzon in Khaltanu, Barukata Adonai, Mekadesh Hashabat. Amen. Amen. Rabbi, it is always such a pleasure to hear your singing voice. Ah, later we'll hear your speaking voice for your sermon, but we may be seated. But your, your singing voice is such a pleasure. We turn ahead to the 138th for Lechado D. Lechado D. Likrat kala v'nech shabbat nekabla. Lechado D. Likrat kala v'nech shabbat nekabla. Shamor v'zachor v'nibor echad. Hishmianu el hamyuchad. Adonai echad ushmo echad L'shemu tiferet v'litila L'echad odi l'ikat kala V'nek Shabbat v'kabela L'echad odi l'ikat kala V'nek Shabbat v'kabela L'ikat Shabbat l'echu v'necha כי היא מקור הברכה מהרוב שלי כאדם נסוכה טוב מה אתם מחשב התחילה לך דודי ליקת קלה ונשמת נקבלה לך דודי ליקת קלה ונשמת נקבלה We rise and face the entrance. We remain 
Remain standing on page 146 for Baruch Hu. Lie, 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 Maruch Adonai Hamborach Le'olam Ma'er Le'olam 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 Ha'er Lai, 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 lai Maybe seated for a moment. On page 149, I invite you to join with me in the middle of the page as we pray together in the English. This is an hour of change. Within it, we stand uncertain on the border of light. Shall we draw back or cross over? Where shall our hearts turn? Shall we draw back, my brother, my sister, or cross over? This is the hour of change, and within it we stand quietly on the border of light. What lies before us? Shall we draw back, my brother, my sister, or cross over? Baruch ata Aronai, Hama'ariv Arabim. Page 150. Avat Olam Beit Yisrael We rise for the watchword of our faith. Seated. <laughs> Bushifta, the Vetaha, Uvlachta, Vadarach, 
Uf shok pecha or kumecha. Uf shartam neot al yadecha. Vayul totafod benenecha. Uf tartam al mizuzot betecha visharecha. Leman tiskeru vasitem met komit votai. Behi tem kiroshim lelohechem. Ani. Adonai lo hechem, asher hotei tiachem neretz mitzrayim, lihiot lachem leilohim, ani Adonai lo hechem. Emet. Emet. So, um, this past week I was meeting with three of my very favorite colleagues, uh, two well, these are my three favorite colleagues. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> but three of my other favorite colleagues, two black Christian theologians and one white Jewish theologian. And we were all talking about how tired we are. Uh, anybody else feeling tired? And so, so I'll say that one of the colleagues said, but you know, no one is feeling as tired right now as Judge Brown Jackson. <laughs> and we all laughed. And then we all sighed. Like that kind of like that very deep, like, <sighs> like this has been a long, tough slog. And, uh, and thank you for speaking a little bit about it today uh, in the beginning of the service. And so, we were talking about the time that we heard her sigh during her own hearing. Did anybody else catch when she just, Senator, <sighs> right? <laughs> and she just collected herself in that moment. And I have to say, I was waiting to see what she was going to say next. And I was also taking in that moment for how degrading it is that here is possibly our next justice of the Supreme Court facing a picture from a picture book, a children's picture book, having to seriously take questions when looking across from that. And she was asked serious questions about critical race theory, but somehow, they were being degraded by the very way these questions were being asked. So she collected herself and then she was graceful with that keen intellect, that kind of grit, those smarts, that dignity. And she gave her typical amazing response. And when I was talking with my colleagues about it, one of them said, but isn't that the way it goes with people who are on the margins, who are brought into positions of power, who earn their way into these high places, that they're degraded in those places and they're subjected to having to answer not just not serious questions, but in a way that's disrespectful. So we all sighed again. And I was thinking about the way in which whenever we approach our song of freedom, the Mihamoka, we always sing about that time of redemption. We always focus on the music as we should. But I can imagine that the Israelites, before they had a chance to sing, that they just sighed at the way in which sometimes people are degraded, the way in which we have to say that with freedom, we have to say that humanity, dignity, and grace will always be respected and that will win the day. So maybe we should all just take one big, deep sigh. <laughs> And let's sing and work toward that day where dignity and grace wins. Yeah, bye, bye, bye. 
160, we turn to our Hashti Venu, where we imagine ourselves enveloped in a sukkah of peace, and that that will renew us. So in the sanctuary of our homes or of our synagogue, we sing our Hashti Venu, praying for that shelter of peace. Hashki venu Adonai Eloheinu l'shalom, l'shalom. V'hamideinu shomreinu l'chaim. U'fros aleinu sukat shlomecha, U'fros aleinu sukat shlomecha. Ah, 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 amen. Shelter us beneath your wings. Shelter us beneath your wings. Oh, Adonai, guard us from all harmful things. Oh, Adonai, keep us safe. Throughout the night Till we wake with morning's light Teach us God wrong from right Amen, Amen As we turn to page 164 for our tefillah, we peruse the page next to it, the words of Ferdinand Isserman who writes, pray as if everything depended on God, act as if everything depended on you. Please rise. Anna <laughs> 
Hello, <laughs> Morin Hagashem, Mechal Kel Chaim Bechafer, Mechaye Hakol Berachamim Rabim, So Mech No Flim Berofer Holim, Umatir Asurim, Umekaye Memunato, Nishene Afar, Mechamochaval Gurot, Umidomela. Melech me mi tu mechaye, u mats mi achishua, ne mana talachayot hakol, aruchata adonai, mechaye hakol, atakadosh, veshim hakadosh, ukroshim ho yom yahalulu hasala, aruchata adonai, hael hakadosh. So a kavana or a, an intention before we go into our prayer, our silent prayer, knowing that this Torah portion this week is Shmini, which is the eighth day of the ordination. And in this way, then, the ordination for Aaron and his sons into the priesthood really were commanded all of us to be a dominion of the holy. And so I'll invite you into the silent prayer from a poem by John O'Donohue for the priesthood. May the blessings released through your hands cause windows to open in darkened minds. May the companionship of your doubt restore what your beliefs leave out. May the secret hungers of your heart harvest from emptiness its sacred fruit. May your solitude be a voyage into the wilderness and wonder of God. May the silence where your calling dwells foster your freedom in all you do and feel as warmly as the air draws in the light. May you welcome each one of your every gift. We continue now in silent prayer. When you're finished with your silent prayer, please be seated. O se shalom bin rumal, hu ya se shalom aleinu. O se shalom bin rumal, hu ya se shalom aleinu. Shalom, Roma, who ya 
שלום עלינו, יעשה שלום, יעשה שלום, שלום עלינו ועל כל ישראל, יעשה שלום, יעשה שלום, שלום עלינו ועל כל ישראל, עושה שלום במרומם, הוא יעשה שלום עלינו. עושה שלום במרומם, הוא יעשה שלום עלינו. עושה שלום במרומם, הוא יעשה שלום עלינו. יעשה שלום, יעשה שלום, שלום עלינו ועל כל ישראל. יעשה שלום. יעשה שלום, שלום עלינו ועל כל ישראל. I don't know if any of you have ever come across this poem, Spell Against Sorrow by Kathleen Raine. But it begins, Who will take away Carry away sorrow, bear away grief. And I had reason to think about this poem because today I visited a dear, dear friend who's homebound in a nursing home. And we just spent the most luxurious time together singing all the Shabbat songs we could ever imagine ever singing. And we just sang and we sang and we sang. And even she bedridden with a fracture, even as she was in this place, for that time, all of her suffering was erased. And here we were together, joined in song. I think that's how we carry grief away. The way that Kathleen Rain finishes her poem, She says, song, sigh away, breathe away sorrow, words tell away, spell away sorrow, charm away grief. So we sing our Misha Berach, our prayer for healing, for that time where we can just get lost in a prayer, in a song that carries our sorrow and grief and suffering and pain away, even if just in these minutes. And so we will think of those who are in need of healing, of body, of mind, of spirit. We'll share their names and hold them here with us so we can sing away their grief and pain. If there are those you are thinking of tonight, I invite you to say, <laughs> Holding them in our hearts, we turn to page 371 and sing the words of Misha Berach together. Trinity, if I... If I yes, no. We'll just go up. Oh, 
bless those in need of healing with refuah lema, the renewal of body, renewal of spirit, and let us say Amen. Shabbat shalom. Um, before I get started, I want to welcome this amazing group of high school seniors from Temple Beth Shalom in Florida, in Miami, Florida, and their very, very cool rabbi, Rabbi Joanne Leuven. So we're very glad you're here. <laughs> Thank you for being here. Um, I've noticed a trend in recent Disney movies, movies like Moana and Encanto. How many of us have we seen Moana and Encanto? Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> um, these movies open with a grandmother telling her people's foundational story to her descendants. I love these opening scenes. The voice of a warm, wise, elderly woman telling a story with drama and flair. She whispers and then she shouts and helps the children understand where their people come from. The story always gives them a sense of purpose, shows how they're connected to the generations before them, and reminds them that they are responsible to keep trying to save their people and their world. The legend that this grandmother shares is never overly sweet or simple. It's always challenging and a little bit frightening. But the grandmother understands the importance of passing the story on to prepare the children for the difficulties and triumphs of life. There is no reason why this kind of enchanting storytelling should only exist in a Disney fantasy. We are all inheritors of a trove of rich and incredible stories. But sometimes, so many factors seem to get in the way of great modern Jewish storytelling. First of all, there's a pretty big language barrier, which can make things hard. There's also the fact that many of us were never told these stories in a magical way. Some of us associate them with the baggage of being dragged by tired parents to Hebrew school or hearing rabbis, not these rabbis, but hearing other rabbis drone on about them in ways that felt distant to our lives. Or maybe we didn't learn these stories until adulthood, and we don't feel like the stories really belong to us, like we can become that authentic wisdom storyteller. But Passover is just around the corner, and Passover commands us not just to hear the stories of our people, but to become the storyteller to become like that grandmother and find the meaning and magic in passing down our people's stories. The Haggadah, the book we read every Passover, serves as a script for each of us. The Haggadah says, I think like Rabbi Gelman said coincidentally at the beginning of the service, the Haggadah says, it is your job to tell this story as though you were actually there. It asks each of us to pass on a sacred drama of moving from slavery to freedom, from hopelessness to miracles. We need great stories and great storytellers so badly right now. We look at a war, we look at a world riddled with war, inequality, and disappointment. And I hear us expressing genuine confusion about this particular moment. Somebody in our community recently said to me, I'm so glad I'm not young. I would never want to grow up in this time in history. But amidst this confusion and loss, we need to keep telling our great stories in order to ground us in our values and help us find purpose 
as we navigate a violent and complex world. And although Passover is just a few weeks away, great storytelling takes some preparation. So I want us to start thinking about it now. I often hear people confused as to the purpose of our stories. And sometimes we confuse the idea of our stories versus our history. We get bogged down in questions like, did this ever actually really happen? Which is an important question. And I think that historical analysis and context add so much to the Jewish conversation. But it's a different task with a different purpose and goal than storytelling. I also sometimes hear people compare the Torah stories to things like Aesop's fables or Grimm's fairy tales. But to me, the main difference is that the Torah stories are not simple or straightforward lessons for children. They're often complicated mythologies that are just as much for adults as for kids. This week's Torah portion, Shmini, contains a confusing and heartbreaking story where Aaron's sons, in what seems to be an experiment with the way they offer sacrifices to God, are themselves consumed by the fire they offer and they tragically die. In the following scenes of heartbreak and mourning, we see the characters of the Torah acting in their classically, extremely human manner. The people are angry, as they often are, and Moses is trying to control the situation. He tries to take care of everyone. He tries to fix the unfixable. He even tries to explain the tragedy. And in his anxiety, he becomes one of those people who accidentally says the wrong thing. He essentially offers Aaron the biblical version of everything happens for a reason, which can be really unhelpful to hear when you've just lost somebody you love. Through all of this fumbling, Aaron stays silent. And when Moses gets frustrated with Aaron, Aaron finally offers up a protest. He seems to say, I have lost my children who are doing the very job that God asked them to do. So I don't know how to make God approve of me anymore. We hear in this statement, Aaron's sadness and anger and loss and theological confusion. We hear the space that the text leaves for feeling lost, for feeling mad at God. We hear that we are not and have never been alone in our frustration at the way the world works. Moses looks at Aaron and realizes that he was wrong to try and fix Aaron's sadness. The text tells us that Moses approves of or understands Aaron's response, that he's ready to just be with Aaron in this moment as his brother. I hear echoes of this story in the music of one of my favorite storytellers, the masterful musical storyteller, Paul Simon. In one of his more recent songs, Simon tells a story in which he says that God, he imagines that God is paying a courtesy, courtesy call to earth on a Sunday morning. God, Paul Simon tells us, is restless to get on to other galaxies but in God's time on earth observes that life on earth is mostly made up of what God calls love and hard times. In Simon's storytelling, God doesn't pretend to have an answer or a solution. God just beautifully names the way that love and hard times coexist. We look at our world, at the immense destruction we are witnessing, and like Aaron, we ask questions about God. Like Paul Simon, we sing about love and hard times. And we keep using our stories to direct us towards something better. As Passover approaches, I want us to ask, how are we going to become great storytellers this year? How are we going to make our stories magical and personal and powerful and meaningful? Who will we name as Pharaoh? 
And how will we use the Exodus story to help us find purpose, to ground us in our past and inspire us to keep working towards a better future? Shabbat Shalom. I think we have some announcements, right? <laughs> come on, come on up. Come on up. I'll start us off. Uh, on Sunday, Sunday morning in particular, um, for our adult education uh, classes in the morning, we have uh, our guest scholar is going to speak on a new day in Babylon and Jerusalem, Zionism, Jewish power, and identity politics since 1967. And that's going to be taught by Dr. Sarah Yael Hirshhorn. And that's at 1045 uh, Sunday morning. Well, I'm so excited for the next one that I had to just, I knew do it. Or I knew we were going to battle for it. <laughs> I just got the invitation in my email box and I was so excited for the Or Kadash Oscar party that's on Sunday, March 27th, this Sunday at 630. So we'll join the Or Kadash members for a pre-Oscar celebration and watch party. So you're going to have to come dressed. Um, in your favorite Oscar outfit, does anybody have a favorite? I mean, I don't know. I have a lot of looking through to figure out which one would be my favorite Oscar uh, outfit. Do you have one? I don't even think I've watched one of the Oscar movies this year, to be honest with you. This is going to be the first, so, you know, you'll still have some. I will hands. dress to the nines, though, on Sunday night. Just They'll the narrow it down for you. <laughs> So we'll stay on to enjoy some trivia and just to watch the Oscars with an incredible group of friends. And then Thursday, March 31st at 6 p.m., uh, we are doing a catch up on our pen pal program, which is through our Sholem Justice program. And this is a time to ask each other questions, to share advice and update the group on how everything is going. So that is on Thursday at six o'clock. Right. And next Shabbat, we have Shabbat Mishpacha, which is our service for families, but also for everybody. Um, and we have sixth, seventh, and eighth grade families joining us at Shabbat Mishpacha. So come, you'll hear a story and in addition, in, instead of a sermon. Yeah, and uh, extra special, not only is there a sixth and seventh grade family Mishpacha Shabbat, um, but it is also the attitude of gratitude Shabbat. Um, uh, as we're going to share some of uh, our director of lifelong learning, Jay Rappaport's music from his new album, That's right. Attitude of Gratitude. And Whoa, eighth graders, uh, there are going to be eighth graders coming back from Israel and reciting a significant, and we'll all recite a significant prayer with them, um, God willing, all of us doing so uh, next Shabbat. We can hardly wait. Nice. Please rise and turn to page 586 for Alinu, our closing prayer. <laughs> we turn now to our mourner's cottage. Please be seated. And we take a moment to bring into this room um, the presence or memory of anybody who we're thinking about or missing tonight. Um, anybody who has helped us become the person we are, who has had an impact on our lives. If there's someone you're remembering, um, I'll invite you to say their name out loud as I pass my hand around the congregation. Hello. 
on vinaigrette. We add to those names, Robert Tarna, Robert Sheridan, Judy Friedman, Thelma Spill, Andrea Stein, Donald Kaplan, Tamara Weisberg, Eugene Pergament, Charles Ahern, as well as Adele Asher, Gerald Bayer, Harry Brickman Jr., A. Al Khan, Dr. Theodore Kornbleet, Faith Dremmer, Robert Fetter, Shirley Klonick Fleischman, Carol Gross, Esther Gutenberg, Jacqueline Hess, Esther Janis, Melissa Kane, Helena Welsh Polar, Gertrude Letterer, Leonard Linhart, Samuel A. Maramont, Marguerite Mendelssohn, Morton Milberg, Peskel Mink, Marvin N. Nachman, Harriet B. Nachman Nathan, Ruth Pinsaw, Jerry Primack, Lorraine Rudnick, Larry Salzman, Abraham Schwartz, as well as Maxine Sherwin, Samuel Siegel, Sylvia Siegel, Seema Stogg, Phyllis Stein, Edwin Superfine, Maxine Unger, Ted Wasserman, Edward Weinberg, Marvin Willage, Dr. Norbert Wolf, and Henry Wolf. The Pranamu Raha, may their memories be for a blessing. We turn to our mourner's cottage and, and rise on page 594. <laughs> Paralau Vizman Kari Vimu Yehesh Me Raba Mavarach Leolam Olome Al Naya Yit Parach Vishtabach Yit Paar Vit Romam Vit Nase Vit Hadar Vit Hale Vit Halau Shmeid Kursha Le Ela Min Kol Virchata Vishirata Tushbachata Venechamata Da Amiran Bialma Vimru Yehesh Lama Raba Min Shemaya the Chaim Malenu will call Israel Bimru. Who says Shalom in Roma? The Asa Shalom, Alenu will call Israel. Who says Shalom in Roma? Who says Shalom? Alenu will call Israel. Amen. I would be seated for this one, if I were you. Page 625. Now, I don't, I don't like to do things too fast because I, I like to be inclusive and I like us all to be singing together. This might get a little fast, just, just warning you. But here's the good part. We're only using the first two paragraphs here. So whether you like the left side or the right side, there's a little something for everyone here. And some of you, this might feel old school. And for some of you, it might feel completely new. Adon olam, masher mala, v'tarem kol yitzir nivra, yet nasa v'chatzokom, hazai melech, hazai melech, shemo nikra, v'yacharei yikichlot hakol, v'ado yimloch nora, v'hu haya, v'hu Tipara, don't know, la 
مشام الله بن ترن کوی تیری و لیه نصاب خاص خود از ایم الله شمونی کرد یا خاره کی خود تا کل بعد و ایم دکتر او یا به هو و به هو یا به تی کرد دور لب مشام الله بن ترن کوی تیری و لیه نصاب خاص کل از ایم الله شمونی کرد یا خاره کی خود تا کل بعد و ایم دکتر او یا به هو و به به تی کرد او یا به هو و به به تی Thank you for the jazz hands, Helene. Appreciate that. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.